what's up witches it's luna the zen witch back from my very short break for another unboxing for you and this is an especially good unboxing because it's a surprise unboxing i got another gift deck um, the other day look at this hedge witch botanical oracle by ciolo thompson and this is llewellyn uh blah, blah, 2018 includes 40 card oracle deck and 192 page color instruction book sorry for the flinch there but you know what happens when uranus is conjuncting your sixth house ruler which also sits in your sixth house sixth house which is physical health um your shoulder goes out your anxiety flips out your back goes out uh your you have phantom gallbladder attacks because you don't have a gallbladder anymore so health things happen and my shoulder is messed up right now anyway body mind and spirit divination is the category this is in wisdom from the boundary lands let the spirits of the plants be your allies and friends this gracefully illustrated deck will support you with insights gleaned from traditional herb lore providing guidance and perspective from the thin places between one world and another Designed to awaken your natural intuition, this collection of 40 elegant botanical cards from the creator of the Lion Strider Tarot draws inspiration from healers and helpers who work in the mysterious realms of wilderness and spirit. It includes a 40-card oracle deck and 192-page color instruction book, and there was no receipt with it to tell me who sent me this gift, but I know what my money's on. Annette, looking at you. <laughs> okay, thank you, thank you to whoever sent this wonderful gift. Thank you so much. As this drops on Thanksgiving, I am thankful for my viewers. I am thankful for people that, you know, are kind enough to gift a stranger. What, you know, that's amazing. And I even cut this plastic so it would be easier to get off and I'm still wrestling with it. Okay, so we have a nice little snap box is what I'm going to call it. Look at this beautiful image. It's a gorgeous set. Hedge Witch's Field Guide. And then we have the deck, which I also have to get the plastic off of. Looky, looky what I did. I put a pair of scissors within reach. Who's the thinking woman? All right. You go back to your place. There we go. All right. Now, there's the back of the cards. And only 40 cards, so it's a nice, concise little deck. Strength, Bearberry, Arctostaphylos uva ursi. I have always wondered how many. Adaptation, Blackberry, Rubus ursinus. So you get the Latin names. And very simple. We just have one keyword, and then we have um, the vernacular name and the Latin name. Courage is borage, borage officinalis. Burdock is tenacity, Arctium lapa. I wonder if this is the same burdock um, in Japan they eat burdock root and it's really good they pickle it it's like this long you know thin thing because it's root um, they pickle it but they also cook it with things and it's very delicious calendula also known as marigold calendula officinalis excellent for your skin brighten build is cattail typha latifolia you can also eat cattails a lot of different uses for those. Build. Soothe is chamomile. Matricaria chamomila. Chamomile, chamomile, I guess it would be chamomile, but they drop that extra L. <laughs> so I say chamomile because that's how I pronounce mile. Sustain, chicory. Ah, one of my favorite plants. Chicorium intibus. And this, if you look at the color there, um, the color of chicory is like the color of this sweater. And I love it so much in the summertime when it starts growing along the sides of the road. And one time um, I had to drive to, you know, about 40 minutes away. 
And on the way home, I thought I'm going to stop and pick some of that and take it home and put it in a vase because I love the color so much. So I pulled a bunch of plants, threw them in the back of the car, and by the time I got home half an hour later, they were all white. The color completely leached out of the plants or out of the flowers. So that's kind of fascinating. Also, chicory root is um, like a fake coffee. You can take the root, uh, roast it, grind it, and it's chicory coffee. And this is sustain. Nurture is clover. Trifolium pretense. Repel is cohosh, actia racemosa. Humility, dandelion, taraxicum officinale, dandelion, another fabulous medicinal plant for nutrition. It's a great diuretic. Um, it does wonderful things for you. Ephemeral is daylily. That's perfect. Hemerocallus lilioasphedilis. This is going to be fun as we go through these Latin names. Dogwood, defend, Cornus florida. So we have dogwood trees right at the edge of the woods. Ritual is elder, Sambucus nigra. Elderberries. Growth is fern, Ethereum filix femina. So we have a, um, I have a maidenhair fern that grows in my garden, and I bought, you know, a tiny plant probably 15 years ago or so and planted it, and it, it's just, it gets bigger and bigger every year. And it's amazing because the leaves are like these umbrellas on this thin, 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 super thin stalk. And you would think that they would just be so fragile, but they're not. Those stalks are tough as nails. So I like that it's called something femina. They look soft. They're not. Okay, hold on a little bit. Foxglove, digitalis purpurea, and that is connection. Another great medicinal herb. Service is garlic, allium ursinum. That's another great medicinal herb. If you get yourself some good Russian stiff neck garlic, and just get enough to keep on hand over the winter and put it in everything and you just won't get sick. Ghost pipe. Monotropa uniflora is mystery. Golden poppy. Dream. E-S-C-H-S-C-H. Escalosia californica. All right, now I'm going to try. Hawthorne. Cretaceous monogyna. Sacred. Abundance, hollyhock, Alcea rosea. We had black hollyhocks like this, and they were gorgeous, except that the um, uh, Japanese beetles, I think, <clears throat> just completely wiped them out. Resourcefulness, huckleberry, vaccinium ovalifolium. Enhance is the indigo plant, Baptisia tinctoria. Look at that. Indigo. Now, I thought indigo was indigo ferra. Hmm. I'm going to set that one aside because I want to look it up to see. That doesn't sound like the Latin name of indigo to me. And I, I have some exposure to indigo. So, okay. Uh, juniper, juniperus communis invigorate. Juniper is a wonderful anti-inflammatory. Gin. Magic, Lady's Mantle, Alcamila vulgaris. Isn't that beautiful? Adversity, Marshmallow, Althea officinalis. Regenerate is Morel. Ooh, we have those in our woods. Morcella esculenta. esculenta. Our neighbor that owns the land, like most of the woods behind us, um, goes out hunting and gets pounds and pounds of morels and chanterelles every spring. Amazing. Tribulation, nettle, urtica dioica. Um, okay, nettles, one of the best, best, best herbs that there is. Get yourself some dried nettles and just make a tea out of it. It's delicious and it is packed with vitamins, absolutely packed. Preserve, pine, pinus sylvestris. Nourish is plantain, my other very favorite plantain. Um, You've seen it everywhere. It puts up those kind of stalks. The leaves are kind of misleading pointing up like that because usually they sort of lay flat to the ground and it's just a, each plant is just a circular thing. Leaves go around and the stalks go straight up. 
those leaves, if you have poison ivy and it's summertime and you see plantain growing, and you can tell it's plantain because from, um, see the veins in the leaves? The veins go from the base of the leaf straight up, all the way up. They don't branch out at all. It's just straight up, 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 up from the very base. Um, take that leaf, crush it up, crunch it. You can even chew it if you're using it on yourself and put it on that poison ivy. It will stop the pain. It will stop the itch. It will help you heal. It is edible. Um, the, the seeds, as a matter of fact, are what they get psyllium husk from. So, uh, yeah, nourish is right. Plantain is fabulous. That's what I make my salve out of. Clarity, wild rose, Rosa acicularis. Protection is rowan, sorbus torminalis. I would like to find rowan trees. I don't know what they look like. Sage, salvia officinalis. Well, we all know what sage does. Purify. Salal. I've never heard of salal. Galtheria shallon. Subdue. Hmm. Samphir. I've never heard of that either. Crithmum maritimum. Maritimum. Adventure. St. John's Ward. Hypericum per perforatum, hypericum perforatum, stabilize. Strawberry, fragaria vesca, enjoy. Trout lily, erythronium americanum is patience. Violet, viola odorata, attract. Wormwood, caution, artemisia absinthum. Artemisias are wonderful. They are called bitters because they're very bitter. <laughs> and if you make a tea out of them and drink them, um, just the bitterness triggers certain things in your digestive system to do good things. Caution is wormwood. And we're back to bearberry. Okay. So, wow, that triggered lots of information there. I want to look up indigo and see actually what I want to do here is... Um, Take a look real quick. Indigo, indigo. Wikipedia. No, that's not the indigo I want. <sighs> All right, let's see if we can find it here. Indigofera, yeah. The genus Indigofera. That's what I thought it was, Indigofera tinctoria. But they have a different name here, so probably a different variety, Baptisia tinctoria. All right, let's look at the book. About the author, Ciolo Thompson is a self-taught visual artist who lives and works in Seattle, Washington. She uses multiple mediums. Uh, that would be media. I want to open something here real quick. All right. And techniques in her work. You know, that's why they don't call them multimediums artists. They call it multimedia because that's the plural of medium. Goof. Um, and techniques, she used multiple mediums and techniques in her work with a focus on draftsmanship and narrative development. A background in comparative literature aids Thompson in her quest to translate complex ideas, stories, and emotions into the language of visual art. Thompson falls most neatly into the category of figurative realism, though her work often dallies at the edges of other disciplines, including comic art and animation. The Hedgewitch Botanical Oracle is Thompson's second published work with Llewellyn. Second published work with, with Llewellyn. Proofreaders, can I have your job? <laughs> All right. Um, let me see if they list the other one because I, that's why I opened a document because it's like I know that name. I know I have another deck with her artwork. Um, it's 2018, and let me do a quick search here. Okay. That would be Otherkin. All right, that makes sense. That was also a gift deck, and yes, the style is very similar. So, yeah, question answered. Introduction, how to use the cards on foraging and plant use. Index of cards. Then closing thoughts, sources, and suggested reading additional recipes using, using foraged ingredients. That's really nice. 
This collection of 40 botanical cards draws inspiration from the grimoire of the hedge witches, wise folk who walk the thin spaces between worlds. In this book, you will find descriptions of the plants illustrated on the cards, where to find them, and how they were used in past times and the ways in which we still employ them. Each lovingly illustrated card in the deck includes an oracle property that can provide guidance to a seeker or meditative focus to a querent. The creation of this deck was inspired by my own quest to become more knowledgeable about the plants around me and those at the root of a witch's natural healing practice. Delving into the properties that tie these plants to divination and tarot has been a great process of discovery and delight. The name of this project, the Hedgewitch Botanical Oracle, directly draws from the plant-based practices at the heart of what some call witchcraft and others consider women's craft or botanical medicine. Okay, we go on and on and on and on. How to use them. On foraging and plant use. Okay, I want to read a little bit of this. Before touching, picking, or eating any wild plants, please take precautions to make sure you are correctly identifying them. Many plants can look very similar and some completely benign plants have lookalikes that can be toxic or even deadly. If you're considering taking your botanical practice into the realm of collecting, eating, or creating medicinal products, I'd strongly suggest connecting with a class or expert in your area for guidance and safety. This book and deck attempts to be as well-researched as possible, but it cannot be relied upon as a definitive source of safe plant identification. I, I like her. <laughs> I like her, uh, her care, you know, and her meticulousness about if you're going to do this, you need to know what the hell you're doing. Um, yeah. Aside from the possible toxicity of the plants themselves, environmental hazards, that's what I was just going to say, where you're gathering, even if you know the plant is the plant, make sure you know where you're gathering from that they don't use chemicals. Um, when I make my plantain salve, I go to our friend's house, he has, a, he has gut acres, and they butt up against a reservoir, and there he uses no chemicals on his lawn or garden at all. So, of course, he has plantain out the wazoo, and I just go over there and cut, 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 and I know it's clean. I mean, it all gets washed again, but it's, it's a good source. Um, environmental hazards must also, must also be considered. Chemicals, exhaust, animal waste, and parasites are all a concern for even the most experienced forager. Another reason to seek qualified guidance is learn the correct methods of harvest, storage, and preservation of the plants. Over-harvesting from one plant or an area can damage the organism or ecosystem, upsetting the fragile balance of insects and animals that depend on the plant for food or shelter. Additionally, please practice the no-trace policy. We are the stewards of this already grievously injured planet, so let's do what we can to preserve what's left. All that said, getting out into nature and becoming intimate with these wonderful organisms is priceless. I strongly urge you to lace up and head out. So no trace policy. Don't leave a trace. Nobody should know you were ever there. And then we have the index of cards. So full color, full page images. Beautiful. And then the name of this common plant so it talks about just the plant in cultural context, what it looks like. Um, the berries uh, used in herbal remedies and what for. Then we have um, another drawing that gives you specifics about identification. Rounded leathery leaves, urn-shaped flowers. When the leaves can be foraged. And then it talks about the quality of the card. Uva ursi means bear berry. And uh, <clears throat> so mama bear, talking about strength and the mama bear idea. All right, let's get in here. Um, let me look at the back after we go through all of the cards. Closing thoughts. and how to engage in further study, and then resources, and then additional recipes using foraged ingredients, things to make in the spring, spring tonic. Ostara salve. She has plantain, 
in coconut oil with some beeswax. I use plantain just in coconut oil because if it, you know you keep it in the fridge, it keeps it solid form, unless you're using MCT oil. Um, and I use plantain comfrey and calendula for my gonzo salve, but then I use just plain, plain plantain as well because some people are allergic to comfrey or calendula. Some people are also allergic to beeswax. Um, I do have a friend that cannot do my regular salve with beeswax in it because she's allergic to honey and beeswax and and bees, you know, so sad. But think about people that are allergic to bees might also be allergic to beeswax. So um, using just uh, coconut oil, solid coconut oil, you can do that. Or you can um, use like carnauba wax, shea butter. There are other ways to make something into a salve other than beeswax. Morel and wild garlic toast. Stinging nettle pesto. Making a pesto out of nettles, creamy nettle soup. And we're still in spring. Now summer, Beltane body balm, chamomile cooler, fried dandelion or daylily flowers, stuffed daylily blossoms. This is exciting. Summer berry crumble. And then in fall, we have Mabin tea bath uh, with chamomile, mint, juniper, sage, wormwood, lavender, rowanberry schnapps. Ooh, rose hip and wild apple jelly. And then in winter, we have spiced Yule brew. You make a spiced syrup. A water brown sugar, whole black peppercorns and cinnamon sticks. I love black pepper, like in chai, that's got a lot of black pepper. I love it. And then there's cocktail, uh, roasted dandelion root, winter witch soda bread. Awesome. All right, let's go in. Let's see if my charcoal is still burning. And before we do, let's invite our allies and ancestors, guides and guardians. Please come in and be with us. We welcome you gratefully. And we offer you this water, the fresh and the ocean water. And we offer you the air and the fire. Let the fire of Israel be a true vehicle of wisdom. And the salt water is the water in the earth. All right. You just know they're going to shuffle well. Yeah. All right. So what do my viewers need to know today? What do we all need to know? As we enter into this period of transition, where we are now, but what message do my viewers need whenever they click on this? What do we need to know to go beyond surviving and to thrive? Okay, let's do one more. We have adversity, ephemeral, and service. So just right off the bat with those keywords, what do we need to do with ephemeral that popped out of the deck first? Um, or, you know, second, but it popped out and flipped over. Take each day as it comes. And we've got adversity here and service. So when we're in adversity and uh, things are falling apart, uh, what do we do to deal with that? Well, the ephemeral thing says, know that this too will change. Ephemeral means daily. It means that it's here and then it's gone. So um, in astrology, the book that we use, if you hand calculate your charts, the book that you use that has all the planetary positions in it and all the events is called an ephemeris because it's a daily thing. So day lilies, they bloom for a day and then they're gone. And to describe something as ephemeral just means it's sort of fleeting, that it's, it's not going to hang around, you know. So remember that this too shall pass. Remember that change is the only constant. So, you know, when good times are happening, we, we, we lapse into those, we collapse into them thinking it's going to be like this for the rest of our lives. And I know that part of my disorder and my disaster head is that 
when things are good, you think, you know, uh uh-oh. But it's it's more like, because I don't find myself filled with dread, it's more like I just stop and think, okay, and really enjoy this because there will be a time when this is not here anymore. There will be a time when this too changes. Um, When I was working um, my job at the henna company and was very first working there, and it was such a joy. It was just such a joy. I worked by myself. I shipped orders. It was product that I loved. It was joyful. I loved showing up for work every day. And one day when I was driving, um, I just got this clear vision of one day this is going to turn and it's going to be the opposite and remember this time when it does and boy did it ever. So it's just being aware that whatever the circumstances are that you're in now, this too shall pass. Whether they're good or bad, you know, this too shall pass. But we're talking about adversity here. And then service over here, when you're in tough times, what can you do to help? And and looking at, you know, maybe on the other side of adversity here, one of the things we always did when my kids were little and we were just dirt poor um, is we never had a sale, you know. Anything that was ready to go, we donated because we benefited from generous people donating and moving things along so that we could get them cheaply. And we always just, you know, baby clothes and all that stuff, just donate it, donate it, you know, and and it works. Um, but being in service to someone else can take your attention off of the adversity that you're in that if you sit and assess, and I'm by no means recommending that you compare your trauma to anyone else's because that is not helpful at all. Your trauma is your trauma and it's valid. And so is everyone else's, you know. Um, and there's not like a measure of how traumatic absolutely something is. It's it's all subjective. But when you're in trauma and crisis, Um, If it's really big, big crisis, the one thing I would say is just try to still be kind. People that are supporting you and helping you, just try to practice kindness with those people. Um, And that is, can be an antidote to some of the pain you're feeling. I think a lot of us just kind of naturally do that when we're really in crisis. I know I get really grateful for everybody that's helping me. Um... But it's also saying that, you know, so a question to ask yourself, and this might be a good gauge of of where you're at as far as, um, you know, crisis and what you're going through, is to ask yourself, am I able to serve right now? And if you're not, if you're in big crisis, you got to take care of yourself. You have to take care of yourself. But if the answer is, yeah, I could do that, then it kind of helps to put your crisis in perspective a little bit. And... I think, you know, when you when we're talking about depression or just being really down, um, doing service in some way, whether that is volunteering for somewhere, donating things, um, you know, whatever it is you can do to helping out a neighbor, helping out the people in your home in a way you usually don't, you know, things like that, or just something like, telling your cashier, thank you so much for being there. I hope you stay safe. I really appreciate what you're doing. I appreciate knowing you're here so I can come and get my food, you know, Um, those kind of things. So, all right, let's go to the book. I mean, wow. So nice when things just come out of quacking. Okay, nope, I have to look up there. They're in alphabetical order by the by the plant. So marshmallow is the first one. And we will read through the whole one of the first one here. Althea officinalis adversity. It's also called mallards, malls, or schloss tea. Most of the plants in the mallow family are edible, and there are records showing their culinary use as far back as the early Roman Empire. You can identify this plant by its soft, furry leaves that are deeply divided into three sections and are similar in shape to maple leaves. So you can see here, the deeply divided means there's this big, you know, part that goes in before it goes out again into a point. Um, The flowers, usually white, light purple, or mauve, have five heart-shaped petals that bloom in late summer. 
Marshmallow is a wonderful addition to a witch's garden due to both its beauty and beneficial medicinal qualities. When adequately watered, it will grow up to four feet tall and will attract pollinators to your garden, especially butterflies. Marshmallow is a perennial, so choose a permanent spot for it before planting. Marshmallow's flowers, leaves, and roots are edible. The entire plant, especially the root, produces an emollient mucilage and the leaves, flowers, and roots are all employed in traditional herbal medicine. So you can see it's probably going to be a, a thickener. You know, it's going to be kind of sticky, slimy. Um, marshmallow is used for irritation of mucous membranes. So yes, it coats. It coats things and puts a barrier down and can be made into a gargle for sore throats and mouth and gastric ulcers. Marshmallows, those sugary confections we now roast on sticks or put in our hot chocolate, were once made with this sweet, viscous liquid that comes from the roots and leaves of the mallow plant. This extremely hardy plant often thrives in times of scarcity, when food crops are destroyed or failing, and that quality has inspired its oracle property, adversity. In areas that have been sacked with crops burned and the land ravaged, the mallow will still grow. Historical records show this plant as a saving foodstuff for those in dire need. In modern-day Syria, it has been reported that displaced people and refugees have been able to forage and eat mallow. Okay, flowers have five petals. Leaves are toothed with three lobes. Though used in the creation of various sweet confections, this plant is a reminder that sweetness can arise even from the direst circumstances. Marshmallow is associated with the Tarot's Four of Swords, carrying an important message about rest and self-care. Shit, now I want to go grab the herbal Tarot and, and see if that's in that deck. Weathering adversity can sometimes require brute strength, but more often it is prudent to take on challenges one step at a time, never forgetting that you do your that to do your best you must be at your best. No, no. I disagree with that. To do your you don't have to be you you can be like at your shittiest and do your best. I totally disagree with that statement. Remember the marshmallow and its ability to grow from the ashes. Okay, prudent to take on challenges one step at a time. And yes, it is best not to go at life so that it grinds you down to your worst rather than your best. But life happens. And whether, you know, not even due to external factors, it can be due to health conditions and disorders and things that you go through cycles and things when you're not at your best. Hello, <laughs> you know, and you can still do your best when you're not at your best but we do want to use these plants to help us be at our best. And now I have to go check the herbal tarot. Hold on. Never mind. Too hard to get to. <laughs> okay. All right. And now let's look at daylily. ephemeral hemerocallus lilioasphedilis, hemerocallus, and golden needles, it's also called. All right, so we have the description. This plant, perennial plant, is very edible. Um, in folklore, pregnant women wear daylilies around their waist to encourage the birth of a male child. A note of caution per usage, proper identification is key as many lily species are quite toxic. Additionally, the raw leaves of the day lily are known to contain hallucinogenic properties. Whoa, the oracle word for this plant is ephemeral, inspired by the fact that each day lily blossom only lives for a single day, reminding us of the temporary nature of everything in life. It can be helpful in times of difficulty to remember that everything is fleeting. Some day lilies blossom at night, a metaphor for beauty born in moments of darkness. Okay, so the the much shorter description here, um, and they don't really give, I mean, ephemeral is the only keyword, so she doesn't go really deeply into things, which is kind of good, because those keywords really do have meaning, and it was, you notice it was very easy for me to put those together into a story and have information come flowing through. So they're really good trigger cards to hook you into what wants to come through. Identifying daylily long leafless stalks. 
blade-shaped leaves grow from the base and clustered potato-like roots. I didn't know that. Okay, and they have oracle property here with just, you know, the one word, which uh, it's right there on the card. Why do you need to put it there again? But that's okay. Small, small, small complaint. All right, garlic. Service. Bear's garlic, ramsons, buckrams, wild garlic, broad-leaved garlic, wood garlic, or bear leek are all different names for allium or cynum. A popular treat for bears, wild boars, and other creatures. This plant is also enthusiastically eaten by humans. Here, here. There is evidence of people using this plant for many millennia. It is a wild relative of chives and is frequently harvested by foragers. The leaves can be used. Yep, you can use everything. Um, a Cornish cheese called wild garlic yarg <laughs> is wrapped in the leaves and imparts the young cheese with a subtle garlic flavor. In North America, the Allium trichoxum is very similar and commonly, commonly referred to as ramps. Oh my God, I'm looking at this ramsons and it didn't click. We've got ramps that grow all over the place in the woods and we had some this spring and ooh, they were good. So yeah, ramps, what the hell do you know? How to make fresh garlic cheese. I love the recipes. This is awesome. <laughs> Bear's garlic is most frequently found in deciduous woodlands with moist, acidic soils and commonly seen in areas where bluebells are prospering. Bear's garlic, bluebell, and lily of the valley often grow adjacent to each other and bloom at a similar time of year. You know what? Next year when those ramps come up, I think I might pull some and plant them in my little patch. Ooh. Um, between April and June in most northern climes. Be cautious when foraging for this plant as it can be easily mistaken for lily of the valley, which is toxic. And I have lily of the valley in my little garden patch. Be sure you can tell the difference between these very similar looking plants and don't rely on scent as the bear's garlic will leave a strong smell on your hands once touched. Okay. All of this, all parts are edible and useful. Hence the oracle property service. Many oracle properties are about finding or marshalling things about yourself that are most unique and special. But this card urges service in a less specific way. Volunteer to walk dogs at an animal shelter, pick up litter, buy someone coffee, go the extra mile to make life easier for someone close to you. Bear's garlic is a common ubiquitous plant. It will never be praised for remarkable blossoms or monetary value, nor will it ever climb above the forest floor. Its value is in its simple usefulness, the way it nourishes so many animals and is a delight to foragers. We often focus on how to be remarkable, special, and praiseworthy, but it is always worthwhile to simply lend a hand when needed or offer a smile or kind word. These actions can lead to friendship and new opportunities and can also take us outside of our own heads for a little while. Sometimes that is exactly what we need. And I, all of that information came out of my mouth before I looked it up in the book just by looking at service and the way it was you know, situated here. So yeah, wonderful, wonderful deck. So today, how can you give service to someone in your home, someone outside of your home? How can you bring that idea of someone's caring for me to someone outside of yourself. Know that the adversity that we're under, even though, um, and I am shooting this uh, the day before Thanksgiving 2020, even though many people are in a great deal of adversity, we've seen lines and lines and lines of cars to get food because there are, I think I read 26 million people in the United States that are now saying they are not, they don't have enough food. 26 million in this country. And uh, so, you know, a, a feast day like Thanksgiving can really put that in sharp relief. So whoever you can help. Uh, we, by the way, canceled our Thanksgiving gathering with the bubble because things have gotten so bad around here. So I am cooking and I will be no contact delivering meals so that my family can eat food. And my sister-in-law said, you don't have to do that. I'm like, I know I don't have to do that, but this is how I celebrate. I'm feeding my family. This is my service. I love more than anything else than to feed people, you know, to make really good food. And I do, I make really good food. 
and to feed people and I mean as a Leo is there anything better than dishing up a meal that you worked all day on and hearing people go oh my god oh my god this is so good oh my god yeah it's like a performance and I love it and I'm nourishing people so even if it's just nourishing your family pouring a little extra love into your food do that we will get through this adversity whenever you're watching this be grateful that you're here watching this you know that you have a brain to think with so whatever's going on in your life uh, be grateful for the opportunity to meet this challenge and let it make you a stronger human being whatever adversity you're in I thank you so much to my anonymous gifter for this beautiful wonderful deck I am grateful for you every one of my viewers every one of my subscribers and if you're not a subscriber why not click that thing click the bell click the like that will help me a lot because it'll help more people see my videos and I'm I'm pushing to my first thousand subscribers inch by inch and every single one of you is helping me get there um, comment below what do you think of this deck do you have it have you used it what are your what are your thoughts I know I'm I'm really digging it it's very simple and straightforward you know um, what else oh yeah discord patreon any of those things um, down below that you care to join I am grateful to you for doing that I will see you tomorrow <laughs> for another unboxing can you tell I'm still not 100% I'll see you tomorrow for another unboxing and uh, some random live streams here and live streams here and there which once my tongue starts working again um, I will be happy to tell you about I will schedule those live streams on YouTube so that you can see they're coming and I hope to see you there until then this is the grateful Zen witch <laughs> blessed be